स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया In this video, we will look at dense nets, one of the more recent architectures that is used in the image net classification challenge, and it has shown exceptional performance uh, in terms of classification accuracy, despite having a fewer number of parameters. Just as we saw with rest nets, as the CNN became deep, it becomes harder to train because the gradients begin to vanish. This particular problem was addressed by rest net by adding feature maps from the previous layers by skipping a layer and adding them to the next layer. But in general, the key observation that this paper makes is that by creating short paths from the early layers that is your layers closer to the input to the later layers, these are basically layers closer to the output, uh, the gradient prop propagation is improved and so is the classification. And in fact, we can train very deep networks more than 100 layers by uh, adopting this particular trick. Now, what this dense nets do, this architecture, it improves gradient propagation by connecting all layers directly with each other. So, suppose we have capital L number of layers, so a typical network with L layers, there will be L connections, that is connections between the layers. However, in a dense net, there will be about L into L plus 1 by 2 connections, we will see what we mean by that in the next slide. Here is a a particular incarnation of your dense net. So, the inputs here there will be k 0 let us say input maps again for an RGB image that like the like the one used in let us say the image net challenge it will be about 3 channels. Now, the first layer creates k feature maps in this case k is 4, k is 4 feature maps, but you see as you see as you can notice as we go deeper into the network if we go to the second set of layers it takes as input not only layers from the previous layer, but also the input layer. So, that is right there. And then as we go to the next layer, the particular layer here takes as input both the pre all the preceding layers, feature maps from the preceding layers. However, the output of each of these layers is fixed. So, in this case there are about uh, 4 feature maps, of course, we see that there are about 5 feature maps in the succeeding layers that is typically fixed. And Another thing that we notice is that as we go deeper into the network, this becomes kind of an unsustainable. So, let us say we have about 10 layers, then the 10th layer will take as input all the feature maps from the preceding 9 layers. Now, that is that if, we, if, if each of these layers let us say produce 128 or 246 feature maps, then there is a feature map explosion. So, to overcome this problem, of course, what we saw they fixed the number of output maps from each of the layers and also created this so called dense blocks as as we see here when this red or blue outline. So, each dense block contains a specified uh, pre specified number of uh, layers inside them and in and among those layers the feature maps are shared like we discussed before. And the output from that particular dense block is given to what is called a transition layer which uses like a bottleneck concept like we saw with rest net and inception we use a one by one convolution followed by max pooling to reduce the size of the feature maps. Now, this serves two purpose because now we can do max pooling. So, the transition layer allows for max pooling which typically leads to a reduction in the size of your feature maps. Now, if you did not have the if you did not have this dense block kind of structure then max pooling would not have been possible because the size of the feature maps across max pooling would be would be less and uh, it would be difficult to concatenate the feature maps if you just across layers. The following advantages are proposed by the authors as far as dense nets are concerned gives parameter efficiency. So, because we have fixed the number of output feature maps per layer only very few kernels are learned per layer for example, about 12 kernels this is one of the uh, architectures they have suggested and then other architectures they have suggested 24 or 32 kernels per layer. They also talk about implicit deep supervision and feature reuse. So, what is implicit feature uh, supervision, uh, deep supervision? So, so for instance, we saw in inception that they had used auxiliary cost functions using feature maps from the intermediate layers. What that does is improves the learning in the sense that it has the features learnt have to be discriminative so as to improve the auxiliary cost function. 
okay. Uh, there have been several other approaches like that for instance there is one approach wherein you take feature maps from the intermediate layers and give it to an SVM as, as, a, as a input and it does the classification task and then that error is back propagated. However, here in this case as, as the feature maps are concatenated from the preceding layers the feature maps from the, the act feature maps or the activations from the earlier layers have a direct access to the error, error function or the cost function. Of course, because we saw that these are these layers are grouped into dense blocks as they call them. So, they are separated from the error function by a couple of dense blocks, but they still have the feature maps or the activations have direct access to the error function thereby improving training as well as learning discriminative features. So, there are a few other uh, terms that the uh, paper talks about and which are the uh, important concepts as far as uh, this uh, dense nets are concerned which I have which he, this, this is summarized briefly in this slide. So, the growth rate this determines the number of feature maps output by into individual layers inside a dense block. So, in this case we saw that here we see about k equal to 5 for instance. Dense connectivity by dense connectivity we mean that within a dense block each layer gets as input feature maps from the previous layer as seen in this figure shown in this figure. And there are transition layers, these transition layers aggregate the feature maps from, the, from a dense block and reduce its dimensions. So, max pooling is enabled, so is 1 by 1 convolutions ok. Cost from composite functions, so the, the sequence of operations inside a layer go, goes as follows. So, you have batch normalization followed by an application of ReLU and then a convolution that will be one convolution layer. These are the operations that are done in a convolution layer. So, all these four uh, concepts are basically uh, the ones that underlie a dense net architecture. In general let us look at some basic details here. Um, so, each layer outputs k feature maps we saw that that is the growth factor. And as far as the convolutions are concerned, they also use this bottleneck concept which we saw in ResNet as well as in Inception. So, that is basically a 1 by 1 convolution followed by 3 by 3 convolutions ok. In general every 1 by 1 convolution outputs about 4 k feature maps which are operated upon by the 3 by 3 convolutions. And before the uh, input goes to a dense block, there is an initial conv layer which outputs about 4 k feature maps ok. And these 4K feature maps are then used as input to the first dense block and so on and so forth. Typically, every network that they have designed for the ImageNet challenge as well as other CIFAR database, etc., typically has about 3 to 5 dense blocks and with a with a growth factor ranging from 24 to 32 and so on. Um, as for the ImageNet challenge, the initial layer outputs about 2K feature maps. So, in this slide, we will look at this is the table uh, which I have summarized. We will look at one of the architectures for DenseNet 121, it has 121 layers uh, that they have used for the ImageNet challenge. Here, the growth factor is 32, equal to 32. So, initial convolution gives rise to 1, 112 by 112 feature maps, followed by max pooling, which is about 56 by 56, and then there are about one about four dense blocks um, which define. So, the first dense block here defines 6 1 by 1 convolutions followed by 3 by 3 convolutions that is about 12 convolution layers. The second dense block defines about 12 1 by 1 followed by 3 by 3 convolutions and 24 1 by 1 followed by 3 by 3 in dense block 3. Similarly, for the dense block 4 we have 16 of these 1 by 1 followed by 3 by 3. So, if you add these up, so you will get some 6 times 2 12. So, from here uh, you will get about 58 times 2 convolution layers it is about 116 of them. And then we have 3 transition layers so that will be 119 there is an initial convolution layer about 121 120 and then the classification layer is about 121. So, that is why they have dense net 121. We will look at the details of each of these layers in the next slide. So, for the uh, dense net here the images shown is that of a cardiac uh, sequence, but uh, the dense net challenge used RGB images from the ImageNet database. So, if you look at this the, uh, the ImageNet challenge network had about 4 dense blocks that is the one we saw followed by and there are in 3 intermediary ones uh, transition blocks as they are called and there is an average global average pooling block 
when which connects to a 1000 dimensional output. So, I summarized here in this picture. Okay. So, let us look at each of these blocks. So, let us look at the first one T B 1 which is the transition block 1 or what we call as initial corn layer. So, the input image is 24 by 20, 224 by 224 by 3 which is a typical standard crop used in by most algorithms in the image net uh, challenge. Now, this, these are uh, then subjected to a 7 by 7 convolution with a stride of 2 giving rise to 64 feature maps. Okay, that is about 6 that is 2 k because k equal to 32 for this particular architecture. So, k is the growth factor the growth factor is 32. So, you get about 64 feature maps for this particular network uh, convolution then followed by batch norm and relu and then a max pooling with a stride of 2 which give rise to a 56 by 56 times 64 feature map. So, 64 channels of size 56 by 56. So, when we look at this is the input to the first dense block right here this is a layer this is a layer block. So, now the first layer right here we have shown right here the growth factor again is 32. Um, as we saw earlier if we do first do batch norm followed by and relu which still retains the size of the feature maps to 64 physics by 56 and then we have 1 by 1 convolutions which we reduce size to 4k feature maps which means that we have 128 feature maps okay, of the same size, size these are these convolutions preserve the size I mean once again a pre activation batch norm and relu and followed by a in this case it is uh, there is a typo here it is a 3 by 3 feature map which gives rise to k features or 32 features. Okay. So, this is the output of the one of the uh, convolution layers in dense block 1. The, the output of this after concatenation with the input will give rise to 96 feature maps because that is 32 feature maps here and the input is 64 feature maps. So, we add those to concatenate those two and this will give rise to 96 feature maps. So, this is for the uh, one of the layers in the first dense block. Now, if you look at a transition block which is about which is uh, right say like right here this is one of the transition blocks it, it receives as input about 256 layers you can go through the uh, math uh, the calculations and verify that it is indeed 256. So, it takes these 256 layers and again batch norm relu followed by 1 by 1 convolutions which gives rise to 128 feature maps subsequently resulting in an output of 128 of size 28 by 28 because we do a 2 by 2 average pooling with a stride of 2 reducing the size of the feature map. So, this is following dense block 1. After going through all the dense blocks when it approaches the uh, average pooling block you have feature maps 1024 feature maps of size 7 by 7 we do a global average pooling the stride of 2 and then of course, we get and it is fully connected to a 1000 dimensional activation followed by a softmax. So, this is the typical this is one of the um, dense net architectures used for image net challenge uh, it is it, it has comparable performance to rest nets and other um, large uh, network architectures that we have seen in the past, but with a reduced number of parameters. So, for instance the one of the uh, uh, top performing dense net architectures had about 0.8 million parameters it is about 800,000 parameters which is sometimes order of 3 or 4 times lesser than some of the larger networks. So, with the reduced we want to but this is kind of counterintuitive because you are concatenating instead of adding like in rest net you are concatenating features to subsequent layers. However, there are no new filters defined in every layer you you control the number of filters in every layer by using a growth factor and by using a small enough growth factor you will only define very few number of filters and subsequently a fewer number of uh, parameters that has to be estimated. So, if for a 100 layer in this case we saw a 121 layer network the number of parameters is of the order of hundreds of thousands. Now, this has another benefit in the sense that it do not overfit. So, typically some of the large networks have hundreds of millions of parameters tendency to overfit unless data augmentation and regularization is done. So, this is kind of implicit regularization uh, it is also referred to as feature reuse because you are concatenating, concatenating feature uh, features from earlier layers and using them uh, and using the filter, filter kernels on top of them. So, that is another advantage uh, and reduced number of uh, parameters also help. So, 
this architecture uh, is now we will we'll see how this architecture can be further used as a fully convolutional network for semantic segmentation um, in the form of both encoder decoder networks or units and see how their performance compares to other deep architectures. Thank you. Now, let us look at one of the layers inside the first dense block just right here. Okay. So, it receives as input 56 by 56 by 64 feature map from the initial con layer which we call T B 1 here. There is a batch norm and ReLU layer followed by a 1 by 1 convolution which gives rise to 4 K feature maps which is about 128 because K is 32 in this case. And then of course, again followed by a batch norm and ReLU and in this case there is a mistake here this is 3 cross 3 convolutions to produce K feature maps. These K feature maps are concatenated with the input feature maps. So, these are we saw that are about 64 of them and there is a 32 output. So, we will get about 96 feature maps which are given as input to the subsequent con layer inside a dense block. Now, as we progress through each of these layers in the end we will have about. So, we have about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 each of them producing 32 con, uh, feature maps plus your input feature maps of size 64 which will give rise to 256 feature maps which is the input to the transition block. The transition block of course, does a sequence of 1 by 1 convolution followed by 2 by 2 average pulling to give you 128 feature maps. So, this if you um, if you walk through this similarly for every other dense block and of course, the transition block right here, then we will end up with about 1024 uh, feature maps of size 7 by 7.